It is mentioned in our books of history that even in the time of the Khulafa al-Rashidun, Umar al-Khattab and Uthman radiallahu an, there were skirmishes with uh, Indian naval forces, Uthman uh, in particular, that uh, Umar radiallahu an did not want any Muslim naval force. But there were some ships going along and perhaps some minor battles took place, but there was no actual invasion in that time frame. It is also mentioned that maybe in the reign of Muawiyah, because Muawiyah was the first one to have an actual naval force. It is mentioned in some books that Muawiyah might have had a small port in what is now the Makran province. A small port where, you know, the ships would go and get their supplies, but not military conquest. He just had that port as a basis. The first invasion, as all of us Indian Pakistanis are aware, was by Muhammad ibn Qasim. This was the first invasion. Uh, what was the story of this invasion? So in the time of the Khulafa and the early Umayyads, Arabs had already begun to travel for the sake of Tijara. And they already had communities in small islands across the Indian Ocean. And they had communities in what is now Sri Lanka. So Arab merchants were buying and selling, trading. And so there was a small group of Muslims as expatriates, as foreigners, not as locals or whatnot. And they had married, intermarried. And they had children from these marriages. It so happened that they didn't go back to Arabia for a long period of time, and they all died, and their children remained Muslim. Their mothers were from locals, and their parents, their fathers are from uh, Arab lands. So the king of Sri Lanka, decided as a gift, as a gesture to the Umayyads to send these children, these boys and girls back to the Muslim lands as a gift that, you know, we respect, we want to have good relations. So the Sri Lankan king did this. He sent a ship and the ship had the young ladies and the boys of these Muslim merchants. Pirates from India, pirates intercepted these ships and took these young ladies, you understand why. News reached the Umayyad Caliphate. And the Umayyad Caliphate sent a message to the local Raja, the local king. His name was Dahar or Dahir. The news reached the Umayyad Khalifa and he sent a message to the closest king. You have to hand these young ladies back to us. They are our children. They are our, you know, Ummah. You're not allowed to do this. The Raja says, I'm not doing it, it's the pirates. And I have, these pirates are rebels. I have tried so many years to fight them, I can't fight them. Whether it was real, whether it was an excuse, we don't know. But he refused to get involved. And so, Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, the governor, he became so enraged, he sent his own nephew, Muhammad ibn Qasim. Muhammad ibn Qasim is from the tribe of the Banu Thaqifa as well. He sent his own nephew, Muhammad ibn Qasim, 17-year-old, military general, and he armed him with everything, gave him everything that was needed. And he said, destroy this Raja, destroy. He did not stand up when we needed to, so now you need to just get rid of this person. So Muhammad ibn Qasim then uh, landed at Daybal, and Daybal is a drive away from Karachi. You still have the remnants of Daybal to this day. I'm not sure an hour, I don't know if anybody's been there, they can tell me, but I think it's an hour away from Karachi, 45 minutes from Karachi. So he landed at Daybal, and this is when the expansion began. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed that generation. It was, I have no doubt in my mind, it is miracle after miracle. If you read how the Muslims conquered that region and Khurasan and Mawara and Nahr and you know the uh, the um, Sassanid Empire and the Roman Empire. There is no question that generation was blessed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Their iman, their taqwa, the barakah of that generation. We have never seen it, you know, ever since then. So Muhammad ibn Qasim begins conquering, conquering. Daybal, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Raja Dahir attacks. It is famous battle took place in a city, Brahmanabad. Rahmanabad is a city back then. So in that city, the river Indus was, was flowing next to it. And one of the Muslim archers threw an arrow with the fire at the end of the arrow. You know that, that fire that comes. And it hit the elephant of Raja Dahar. So the elephant fell into the river Indus with Raja Dahar on it. So Raja fell into the river and then the Muslim began attacking until the Raja was killed. With the death of the Raja Dahar, obviously, Mansur... Um, uh, Brahmanabad was conquered, it was then called Mansura. Okay, Mansura. So the city of Mansura 
became the original capital of the Muslims of the Sindh province, Karachi, the Sindh province. So the city of Mansura became that capital. And a number of other cities were also uh, uh, created or renamed. Mahfuda was one of them. Multan as well came under Muslim control. So four or five cities were then created in this region of what is now the province of Sindh. 